going on, the friends? My name is Amateur Dreads, and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 3DS. We're all off, off last time. We got through the bottom of the well, and then now here in this part, we are going to head on to the next dungeon, which, um, uh, technically is supposed to be the fifth dungeon, uh, to the game's order, but, uh, we are going to be doing it now here. Um, I guess, uh, the way that the game wants you to order things is you get the song that works you to the graveyard, um, and then... Okay, <laughs> oh man, um... I guess they want you to get the warp song for the graveyard, realize you need the lens, and then go to the other area to go do that dungeon, and then go here? I don't know, it doesn't really make sense, because because either way you need, well, supposedly you need the magnifying lens, the lens of truth, uh, to do both of the remaining dungeons that we have left. Um, supposedly, again, you don't need to, but uh, I guess the game wants you to. Uh, but anyway, we are here, um, and this is where the Nocturne of Shadow will take you to, and that is right on this part. This part is only accessible uh, through the that warp song. Uh, very interesting choice, because, um, <laughs> you know, this is like a very obscure area, but here we are, and um, now we're going to go ahead and... Play well. Go ahead and equip Dins Fire. This is where you need Dins Fire. Um, because you can't just shoot fire arrows at every single one of these torches. You just have to. You have to light up all these torches, and then now the, it opens. And you can also do this as child. You, you just play Dins Fire. You use Dins Fire, lights up all these torches, and you can enter this dungeon as child. But you're gonna re really quickly see that you can't actually do anything inside there as child. All right, now there's a lot of these torches here. I want you guys to count how many torches there are here, and let me know in the comments how many there are. And then now we're going inside. Alright, welcome to the Shadow Temple. Uh, oops, oh my god. I realize that. Ugh. When I play this game, there's certain items I want on, on certain buttons, but... Ah, dang. Alright. The shadow will yield only to one with the Eye of Truth. So yeah, this, this, this dungeon is letting you know that if you want to have an easy time, then you can do this dungeon, then, then you want the Lens of Truth. Um, obviously, you don't need it if you know where everything is in this game, but yeah, that's a process. Anyway, so this whole gap right here is the whole reason why you cannot actually do this dungeon as child even though you can uh, enter this place, but it just, it's just not very, this is not very useful if you do. Um, okay, first room. Um, I am going to give myself one try at this, and if I fail this, then I will do this the intended way. So I'm going to cross my fingers right now, hope that I'm lucky, and I did not get lucky, okay. Um, unfortunately that, that actually randomizes every single time, so it's not worth trying it multiple times and hope that and hope that I get lucky again. So, what I will do instead is equip this, um, equip this, okay. And um, you wanna go ahead and yeah, okay. So yeah that that if if I if I didn't fall down there, this would have been this this skull would have been somewhere else. Um, so it's just completely random every single time, and it's just not worth trying every single time. So you know, so yeah, the basic idea is you want to find which one's the real skull, and then point the bird statue at it, so that way you can head across this area over here. Um, so, uh, let's see, I believe... Going to put fire arrows over here, and um, 
Yeah, if you if, if you can, you're you're gonna realize here that there's um all, there's these torches right there. It's kind of hard to notice them because they're slightly camouflaged into the the wall there. But I'm gonna shoot that. And then shoot this. Oh, didn't do it. For some reason, the fire on hitbox is kind of weird. But um, yeah. So you need to light the torches and get across to this. Um, Normally, you, in the no, in a normal variation, you you actually do this uh, one room later. Uh, but um, the place that you were supposed to go in the normal mode is blocked up by a locked door this time. So they changed that. Um. Okay. All right. We got a giant Bemos. Giant. The way you defeat giant Bemos is different than uh, regular Bemos. They take two bombs instead of one bomb this time around. All right, head over here. Um, okay. All right, here's uh, something that you can do. Go ahead and uh, when you, you can move while you're holding your sword out and um, you walk slow enough so that these, these Gibdos don't move and then uh, a fully charged spin attack will defeat these guys in one hit with the Goron Sword. It's amazing. Okay. And so let's see what we got here. We get a key. Okay. Um, so that key is pretty important. Uh, at least it's going to be important. So that's that room taken care of. There's a marble wall over here, which we will blow up. Did I, did I blow it up? I did. Okay. Oh, get away! Okay. Alright, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, okay, so we got a lot of silver rupees here. Uh, but also, most importantly, we have to defeat all the enemies here in this room. And in this room, we have a lot of uh, big Skultulas that we have to go ahead and defeat. And that. Bye! Ooh, oh, whoa. Yeah, you have to um, duck underneath all these things in order to... Um... Yeah, you have to duck underneath all these things in order to... Um, uh, not get hit by those, uh, saw, those, uh, sights that the, those spinning statues are spinning around. And, um, you can actually read all these things right here, and all those things basically just tell you, uh, things, uh, like, little, like, hints, pretty much, that tell you how to get through, um, the dun- that, that tell you how to get through the dungeon. Uh, can I shoot through the door so I can kill you? I can't. Okay. That doesn't make sense! I'm shooting through the, um... Uh, what is it? I'm shooting through the, um, the little hole part of the, of the cage. It should make sense. Uh, I don't get it. Alright. That's fine. Because, um, let's see. Over here is a hookshot target. And you want to go ahead and get all the silver rupees here. I, I thought you didn't have to because if you do, it's it's going to own, it's not going to it'll it'll contain a locked door that will contain that treasure chest right there, which that treasure chest well it contains a map and I'm not going to pick it up. That's all. All right, there we go. And then when you, once you defeat all the all the uh, enemies over there, then we can leave this room. All right, um, right there, that thing's gonna tell you that there is a invisible pit over here. So you can go and fall down over here, and then now um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that guy. That's a that's a, that's a big skull toy. Okay, in in this room, well, in this part of the room, well, there's there's a boat right there. I love boats. But, um, yeah, there's a treasure chest right there. Invisible chest. You will never think that that's there, but it's there. Um, and the way you find that out is, of course, using the one of the truth. Now, and then, like I said, if you know where everything is, then you don't need the one of the truth. So, as a result, uh, the one of the truth is completely optional, but just highly recommended. Um, and uh, if you know where the chests are, you can just kind of feel your way on the uh, to, to, uh, for the chest, you can just feel your way and open the chests. Um, 
But, um, that's sometimes really hard to do. Um, but anyway, we're gonna head on back. I'm not, you notice I'm not gonna go through the middle door. Um, and, well, I'm just going to head on this way and see what we got going on over here. Alright, so over here, um, there is a bomb wall over here behind this. Go and blow it up. And then here's where we're going to use one of our lock, uh, one of our keys over. Alright, so many people may probably know this particular room. One who gains the Eye of Truth will be able to see what is hidden in the darkness. Yeah, so that basically that indicates that, um, well, you don't really need the Lens of Truth here. But basically, you can go through a lot of these, most of these, um, skull, uh, the, the place with the blue skulls, you can go through most of them. Um, right there, I'm not gonna go inside there. That, it, what is in that door is a trap, so I'm not going in there at all. Um, behind here, there's a song of time block, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it, so we can go through this part of the maze. It's not a very difficult maze to go through, like I said, because because all you gotta do is just feel your way through uh, with these fake balls. Um, okay, uh, this room sucks because we have these eye things that shoot uh, fire at you, and they're just gonna keep shooting fire at you, and you can't shoot arrows at uh, at them to make them stop or anything like that. Um, what you do instead is there's this one eye switch that doesn't shoot fire at all. You want to shoot it open. Yeah, very mean dungeon design that they did right there. And now you're going to wonder, what did that do? Let's go ahead and head on to the other side and see what that did. Actually, maybe? Oh god, what, oh god, what did that do? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, wait, it opened this door? I think it opened this door. Uh, wait. What? Alright, well, regardless, um, I think, I think this is the room that we have to go into, but, uh, here we are against a dead hand again. That's right. Um, so, this time we're fighting him as an adult, and this time with more powerful weapons, um, we, it, this guy isn't really that hard. As you can see, I just defeat, defeat this guy in, in two phases, as opposed to like the three or four phases that we, that we fought him at in, um, as a child. That's just the power of the Goron Sword. Alright, uh, oh. there's something else here in this room, I think, right? All right, let's go ahead and open up, open up his chest. Cause I don't think, maybe this, maybe I'm thinking of something else. All right, so for for defeating the dead hand there, uh, we get the auger boots as our reward. Okay, so this this is what we need to do. Okay, uh, so I believe that ice switch right here, that I switch that we that I that I shot open uh, allows you to go inside this door. Otherwise, I I believe it'd be it would be barred up. Um, Either way, you have to hit that ice switch in order to get anywhere in this maze. But, um, there we go. So now we got the hover boots, so now we can go a little bit further into the dungeon. And the hover boots is actually a pretty cool item. I actually like this item. Uh, the cool thing about the, about the hover boots, uh, one, again, just like the, uh, just like the iron boots, the hover boots also has a very has a nice quality of life, and that is that you, you, it is an equipable item. Um, so what? Uh, so any? So outside of that, you slip around a lot, which is unfortunate. But you can walk in mid air. Oh man! It's not Jesus, but because Jesus levitates on water, but levitating the air is amazing. But it's only for a short period of time. But. Um, in order to make in order to make across some large gaps, um, when you cannot hook shot across anything, this is this is going to be important. Um, so unfortunately, if you're playing this along with um, like the original version, 
then this dungeon can be a pain because now you have to, uh, just like the water temple, you have to go, you have to constantly do extraneous pausing in order to, uh, in order to, uh, equip the hover boots and not equip the hover boots. Because sometimes you don't want to have to equip the hover boots because the slippery traction makes it kind of hard to move around sometimes. Yeah.